Welcome to this first episode in a series of workshops introducing you to the functionality of Audacity. In this workshop specifically, I would like to introduce you to uh, playing back sound files, importing sound files, but also recording sounds directly into Audacity. And I will start by trying to import uh, a sound file that, or sound file format that many of you probably um, have created with your cell phone recordings, which is an M4A file. And I know we didn't want to record in that format originally uh, since it is a compressed format, but um, the reality just uh, shows us that, you know, there's quite a few of these files out there and you might actually want to work with one or two of them. So what happens if you actually try and open one of these files in Audacity is that Audacity complains that it cannot read this file type. And we can uh, install a library that will help us uh, reading this file type in Audacity, which is called the FFmpeg library. And we can do that by going to Audacity, Preferences, and in the Preferences we would navigate to the Libraries section. And in the FFmpeg library version, you see that there's no library found right now. So what you can do is you would go to the download section that will open a website. And now depending on your operating system, you would either download the Windows version or the Macintosh Tosh version. Since I'm working on a Mac, I will actually go here first and then I'll backtrack and I will also talk a little bit about the Windows version in just a second. So for Macintosh, I would go to this part right here saying installing FFmpeg for Mac. And then I would go to the download page for the recommended package installer. Here, I need to choose the 64-bit FFmpeg for Mac OS distribution. So I click on this link and then just say save file and this will go into my downloads folder on the Macintosh. You see the download has already started. Just have to wait a few seconds here and then I can continue with the installation. While this is downloading, I just quickly wanted to backtrack and talk for a second about the Windows installation, which is very similar to the Mac installation. We would go to FFmpeg installation uh, section right here. I actually have to scroll up just a little bit. So um, we are in the installing the FFmpeg import export library for Windows section here. Going again to the installing FFmpeg for Windows link. That will get us to that page. And here we would go to the FFmpeg download page. Uh, on that page, you see there's quite a bit of text, so it might be a little bit uh, daunting at first to, to find the right kind of a link. But you would go uh, to the section right here, which says FFmpeg for Windows and latest Audacity versions. Download the recommended zip option click on this link and this will actually download a zip file that when you um, when you uncompress it will uh, result in this folder right here that I have already downloaded to show you what that will look like on your computer. And if you open that uncompressed folder, you see that there is an ffmpeg.exe file in there. And so on Windows, Windows specific now, on Windows you would click on that ffmpeg.exe file and that would guide you through the installation. Okay, so back to our Macintosh installation. Um, the file has downloaded right here and I can make it uh, visible in my finder by clicking on that little um, magnifying glass. Double click that file now. It's actually in my downloads folder. And then I will be guided through the installation um, of that helper library. Need to type in my credentials here and then wait for the rest of the installation to unfold. Close this and then I move my installer to the trash so it doesn't take up any more space on my uh, hard drive. All right, so I click on OK here. So now all I have to do is basically restart Audacity. So I quit out of that and then restart Audacity one more time. Now if I go into my preferences, libraries, now I have the correct FFmpeg library version in there. So that restart of Audacity is important. If you just continue to work with the already open version after your install, um, the library won't show up. You still would have a problem to load your files. But in this case, when you restart it, it will load the library before it loads the software and then you can get your M4A files um, open in Audacity and playing those back without any problems.
All right, and so this would already be a nice segue into the next section of this tutorial, which is how to play back files. You already see you can easily click to certain parts of your file in the timeline and then just hit the play button and the stop button in order to play back a sound and then to stop a sound respectively. We also like to briefly talk about the anatomy of um, you know, this track that we're seeing right here. This is a mono recording, so you would only see one track that represents the sound. If you open up a stereo recording in contrast, so let me X out of that, and whenever you want to close the sound within your Audacity project, you would hit that X button and then I get rid of that sound. Whenever you want to open a stereo sound, and now I actually go into the files that I have provided with this workshop, um, and you can find a link to download these files in the comments section of this uh, video tutorial, but also on Brightspace in our uh, class account. So I go in here and then I uh, want to open, let's say, the uh, Summer Sounds, 02 Summer Sounds file. So I drag and drop that into Audacity. And you see in contrast to that mono file that only has one channel, uh, we see now uh, for a stereo file, two channels of the sound. And if you play that back, It plays both of these tracks at the same time, but one is meant for your left ear and the other one is meant for your right ear. So it gives you a more spatialized kind of sense of uh, sound. And we'll talk more about even with mono sounds, how we can uh, develop certain kind of strategies on how to spatialize them later on or how to play them specifically more on the left or on the right hand side of um, uh, a soundscape, for example. So this would be how to play back sounds, how to open sounds in Audacity. Let's also briefly talk about how to record sounds into the software. And this is fairly straightforward too. Uh, if you look at your um, playback uh, buttons right here, your control buttons for the software, it's actually one button with a, a red dot on it and that would be your recording button. So by default, uh, the software uses your internal microphone of your computer. And uh, if you hit the record button, and then speak, one, two, three, four, and then hit the uh, stop button again, uh, you already record whatever the microphone is picking up at that moment. You can easily play that back. One, two, three, four. And then you can continue to work with these sounds uh, in your sound composition. Now would be a really good moment to actually talk about uh, saving a project already because you do want to actually maintain the sound file the next time you work on this. So let's say you have to quit out of the software and then you want to continue to work on something like this. So uh, saving files is fairly straightforward in Audacity 2. Go to file and then you would just say save project, save project as, and um, in my case I would just want to save it on the desktop. So I navigate to the desktop and then I call this um, my first sound composition and hit save. And then um, I want to show you what happens on the desktop because this is really important. Uh, Audacity will actually create uh, two uh, instances of this project. So we'll create a project file, which has the file ending AUP, which stands for an Audacity project file. And it will create a folder that now has um, the sound recording that you just created broken down into individual files uh, in here, saved in here. So and this is really um, quite complex. So this would be something you don't want to mess with. You just have to acknowledge that this folder is here, but you also should know that this folder is always directly linked to this AUP um, project file. What does that mean? That means you shouldn't take that folder and move it anywhere else on your hard drive. It also means that you shouldn't delete that folder because you think, oh, all of my information is actually in, in this AUP uh, project file. That is not true. The AUP project file only links to media files that then uh, represent your sounds or that allow you to access these sounds. So if you delete this project folder that relates to this AUP project file, you'll basically lose all of your sounds and your project will break. 
So that also means you have to keep on top of things with your sound compositions. And just to end this first workshop, I want to leave you with uh, one tip or one strategy for working um, throughout the semester actually in this class, which is to keep all of your files together and uh, know where all of your files are. And for me, the best way to do that is by actually creating an empty folder, also on the desktop for now. And I just call this uh, sound. So I know all of the uh, files that I'm working with, all of my projects, all of my sources that relate to sound will be in this uh, sound uh, folder. And so uh, what I want to do is I can now safely X out of Audacity, quit this software. Um, Audacity quit. And then I take all of my files. So the sound files I have downloaded um, as example files for this workshop, I put them into the sound folder. I take this uh, initial M4A file, put that into my sound folder, and I take my Audacity composition AUP and my project folder that go with that and uh, put that in here as well. And so then the next time I actually want to open my Audacity project, I just simply double click on my first sound composition.aup. And all these files should be in the same location and a correct location for that project to open um, without any problems and allowing me to continue to work on this project.